assassination plot on Iranian American activist revealed by Justice Department. On January 27th, officials announced that the U.S. Justice Department charged three men for their role in allegedly plotting to kill Iranian American journalist and human rights activist Masih Alinejad. The three men are 43 year old Rafat Ar uh, Amirov of Iran, 38 year old Polad Omorov of uh, Chechia and Slovenia, and 24 year old Khalid Mediev of Yonkers, New York. The three men are reportedly members of a Eastern European crime syndicate. Alinejad said, quote, I want to tell you that the Iranian regime thinks by trying to kill me, they will silence me or silence other women. The Iranian mission to the United Nations and the Iranian state media did not immediately comment regarding the charges. Jake Sullivan, the United States National Security Advisor to President Joe Biden, said that the incident, quote, follows a disturbing pattern of Iranian government-sponsored efforts to kill, torture, and intimidate and to silence activists for speaking out for the fundamental rights and freedoms of Iranians around the world. Alinejad has been a constant target for attacks plotted against dissidents and critics of Iran's government. Last July in 2021, she was target the target of a kidnapping plot allegedly connected to the Islamic Republic. This is so bizarre. Like you would think this makes no sense. How does this benefit them? Right. But again, you have to understand that the Islamic Republic is not just one entity. It's a multiple competing entities within one regime that is just, it's just a chaos. Right. But this is insane. This is insane. So, um, because I mean, at this moment of international pressure on the Iranian government, this is what they needed the la last. Like, I, it makes from a strategic from a strategic standpoint, it just does not make any sense for why they would do this. Yeah. Yeah. But. Well, I mean, so for those who are not aware, last year there was an assassination attempt on Masih Alinejad, who was one of the most prominent um oppositional activists in terms of fighting the islamic republic of iran and fighting compulsory hijab in particular um and so now the justice department has revealed a lot more information about the plot to kill her because they released the indictments so this is all of what th they are alleging um, that these men engaged in and the kind of charges that they are going to be bringing against them in court. And basically, it's almost kind of like a preview into an opening statement that they might make when they're arguing in court before a judge. And um, Miriam is asking an interesting question. So he's saying some of those names didn't sound Iranian to me. So my they're understanding not. is is that these men originally come from Azerbaijan. Mm, yeah, they're hired. They are, they are hired by the regime. Apparently. Yeah. And um, what's also very interesting is that there were... A, so the indictment itself does not directly say that the Islamic Republic is responsible for this. However... When the FBI has given statements about this, the National Security Advisor, various high ups in the Justice Department, blah, blah, blah. They are very clear in saying that this is originating from the Islamic Republic. Like, it's not in the specific charges because, like, when you're bringing charges forward towards someone, especially if it's the freaking Justice Department, they're only going to bring forward what they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. And so they, they have to approach an indictment very conservatively. So that's why it wouldn't contain that direct accusation in the indictment itself. Which brings me to Gossam's question. He is asking just allegedly. So because I say, OK, they were allegedly plotting to kill her. Da, da, da. You in, you know, here in America, we have you are innocent until proven guilty. These men have not been proven guilty in a court of law. They are have accusations and allegations levied against them by the U.S. Justice Department, but they have not been proven in a court of law. So that means that at this point, they are still alleged. 
That's right, Qasem. Here in America, in America, we have actually something called standards. I'm sure you don't understand it. Back from your Persian empire. I know this goes <laughs> oh, right no. above your head. <laughs> Here in America, we do things right. That's Tell them, Susie. <laughs> and that's actually really funny. One day I was hanging out in the Atheist Republic Persian Discord with everyone, and they were watching um, a Persian dub of 12 Angry Men which is a, a really old fashioned you, um, American movie about 12 jurors having an argument about if they're gonna find a man guilty. And everyone in the chat that I was hanging out with, with talking about like, oh my God, this is like a dream for us, blah, blah, blah. Like, it was very interesting for me to be hanging out with all these people from Iran, like watching what our justice system was like. But anyways, um, Mustafa had kind of a funny question, a comment. He said, I lost count of how many times she escaped death. She's the Persian Rasputin. <laughs> yeah, seriously, they are after her. Um, th there was um, something else I wanted to mention. So when, when all these high up government officials and various agencies were making statements on regarding this case, one person in what department they come from, I can't remember off the top of my head, but made a very interesting statement about how in cases like this, we are seeing a merging of criminal organizations and rogue states. Because the Islamic Republic of Iran is a rogue state. And so now they're going beyond just their, I mean, they, this is their entire history, right? But this is like on a new level and it's contemporary. But, um, of, of literally just straight up using criminal organizations to further their aggression on American soil. Yes. It's yes. wild. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, anyways, just new, uh, new merch. Just, no, no, not new merch. New poll just dropped. Do you guys want to see? Merch? <laughs> I know. It's that was on purpose. <laughs> guys, new HUD um paul just dropped just yesterday or two days ago and we the been hottest going... data of 2023 <laughs> yes yes because yes. here we geek out for some data get excited guys no actually this is exciting legitimately <laughs> this is pretty cool this was pretty impressive okay uh, we were on the persian show uh, so for people who don't know atheist republic also has a persian show uh we 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 go live there now you know, six times a week now, almost like five or six times a week. So we're doing a lot of lives there, right? Anyways, we were like going through these data, like we went through it from, you know, top to bottom. Like we, we spent around two hours just analyzing this data, which is amazing. This just came two days ago and it's making a lot of, you know, noise on Iranian social media. So this is pretty cool. Right. So I don't I, I'm not going to be able to go through all of it. I'm just going to do a selective few. Which ones do you like to see the most? Let's actually look at the main thing that people want to see. There is right? so much to dig into this new data in the graphs. Oh, my God. I went full geek. Yes. By the way, we full geeked out. For, this is a scientific. This is an academic poll. It's a scientific poll done by um and and we went through the methodology on the show as well for people because people are like eh, but the samples will be biased because people are mostly answering from outside the country and stuff so we went through the methodology and we showed how people how they um you know how they clean the sampling size and how they try to reduce the biases and how they use like the pews um method uh, scientifically proven method of cleaning the data and what is it here like yeah they do the the different methodologies that they try to adjust everything to match the um actual surveys from the country so they you know yeah anyways you could go through the methodology to see how much it's trusted but anyways let's go to the results okay so this is pretty cool here's the Okay, so the question from the Iranians, okay. By the way, th these are questions where mostly we did uh, other polls from this is, is institute that talked about religious 
views or political views. This poll was specifically about was about Iranians' attitudes towards the 2022 nationwide protests, right? So we want to see how people felt about it and how political views have changed since and or because of it, right? So the question was, if a referendum were organized on the question, Islamic Republic, yes or no, what would you vote, okay? So 80.9%, so almost 81%, of Iranians have answered no to the Islamic Republic. 81% of Iranians voted no to the Islamic Republic. 15% 15, 15 voted yes to the Islamic Republic. Okay? Um, and 4% answered do not know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh my god. Oh my god. But guys, it gets it gets more juicy. It gets more juicy, okay? Uh, by the way, the, the, the same answer is now broke down here by age, by gender, by education. It's just interesting because women are more anti-regime in Iran than men. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, we, like, I mean, it, make, it makes sense, but it's also something new because usually in revolutions, men tend to be more rebellious and have a revolutionary mindset than men, than women on average. But in, in Iran, it's the opposite. In, in Iran, it's the women who are more anti-regime than the men, right? Also, look at this. Um, the 50-year-old people are 76% against the regime, but 19 to 29 is 90% against the regime. So when this generation replaces the other ge um, generation, this number is going to increase against um, against the regime, ninety percent. Any everybody against twenty nine. By the way, below twenty nine is half the country. Okay, so like that's like it's a, it's a very young country, right? That's so true. that's a really good point. I think you should reiterate that for people to understand what that means. Yes, and these young people are going to replace the old people, and that's ninety percent against <laughs> the. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not, oh my 70%. god. Oh my God! Wow, seventy. So Mariam is saying seventy percent of Iran is under thirty-five, right? So these young people are going to replace the old people, and it's going to be even more uh, anti-regime. But let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. There's so much data. I'm not going to share everything with you guys, right? Um, by the way, us Republican. By Republicans, I don't mean American Republican. Okay, Republican. I'm mean, in Iran in the context of Iran. Republican means people who don't want a monarchy, right? So people who want the regime to fall. There, we are two groups of Iranian. Some of us want a, a constitutional monarchy to back, come back, uh, to come take its place. Some of us want a republic to come back. And us Republicans in Iran, we have we we have defeated these polls shows that we have defeated the monarchists by a huge, 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 huge margin. <laughs> the Shaloa here are receiving. Oh, here, yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, so it, this doesn't. This cuts the uh, republics, the people who want a republic, into two two groups, which if it added them up, it would show that we're so much more than the constitutional monarchies, right? So present the people who want a presidential republic, the people who want a, parliament a parliamentary republic, and people who want a constitutional monarchy, right? So even the people who want a presidential republic, even though we were uh, split in two, look at this. We're still more than the constitutional monarchists. So if you add the republics together, we are like so much bigger than these uh, monarchists. Anyway, so we win. Second monarchists. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, this is interesting. How did you feel when the soccer team of the Islamic Republic of Iran lost to the United States of America? Okay, so That's such in a specific Iran question. <laughs> No, that's a very important question because people who follow us know how important this was, right? So inside Iran, 46% of Iranians felt happy. Outside of Iran, 56% of Iranians felt happy, okay? Uh, inside of Iran, 23% of Iranians felt sad. And in outside of Iran, 8% of Iranians felt sad. So you can see the people who felt happy about the Iranian team losing to the United States were much more than the people who felt sad, which is pretty interesting. But here, yeah, this is, think of the formation. Okay, this, these are stuff that you guys wouldn't know. These are figure people who you do not know, so I'm not going to bother you with that. But 
I'm not gonna bother you with this one. Oh, this one is cool. Okay, so imposing sanctions. I'm just gonna read the sanctions part, okay? Because this is what people keep asking me. Like, how Armin, you keep saying Iranian people want the sanctions. How do you know? How do you know? Now we have something. That, I mean, that's a good question. I don't want to make fun of you, okay? Uh, how do you know? That's actually a legitimate question. But now we have data that we could refer to from both inside of Iran and outside of Iran, right? So I'm just the rest of the things that oh, I'm just gonna read two of these, okay? So the question was, in response to the protests in Iran, Western governments may respond with the following actions. What is your view about each of these? Okay, so the first question was, imposing sanctions on officials who play a role in suppressing the protests. Inside Iran, 76% of Iranians agreed with that, okay? Outside of Iran, 98% of Iranians agreed with that. 98 percent okay so and then the last question i'm gonna the question at the bottom i'm, I'm not gonna go through all of this the people who are saying ending negotiations to revive the the joint nuclear deal jcpoa jcpoa inside of iran 62 percent of iranians agree with that so to end the nuclear deals outside of iran 89 percent of iranians agree with that wow yeah but, so, but I think what really matters is like we can put a lot of consideration to the people that are inside. And that is still an incredibly high number. Holy cow. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So um, people inside of Iran seem to be more in favor of executing the people after the revolution is over than Iranians outside of Iran. So there's that. Uh -oh. So So the question was imagine live imagine living in an authoritarian state that oppressed and killed thousands if the regime changes one day what punishments should the former officials receive so the revolutionary execution by revolutionary executions means like no due process just like just go choppy choppy on all of them right so inside of iran 16 percent agree with revolutionary executions outside of iran eight percent of iranians agree with that okay Second option is death death penalty uh, only if a fair court reaches the verdict. Um, okay. Inside of Iran, yeah. Inside better? of Iran, better, yeah. Inside of Iran, twenty nine percent agree with that. Outside of Iran, twenty four percent agree with that. Uh, third option is punishments other than the death penalty, like life long uh, uh, life or long prison sentence. Inside of Iran, twenty four percent agree with that. Outside of Iran, 48%, 49% agree with that. Uh, forgive it, forgiveness and general amnesty uh, inside of Iran, 3% agree with that. Outside of Iran, 1% uh, agree with that. Um, and then the last option, I have no opinion and legal experts should decide on the matter. Inside of Iran, 27% agree with that. And outside of Iran, 17% agree with that. Okay, so now we will go to the most interesting graph for you guys uh for, on, on this save matter the best okay. for last oh my god save the this best is what we're for here last, for yes. yes so the question was which option comes closest to your political um, orientation the good thing about this graph is that it looks at the change over time change over time okay and look at the uh, the four options were um the red one is proponent of regime change as a precondition for change, right? People like no negotiations with the regime, no referendum with the regime, just topple the government, then we can talk. That's the red one. The, the next option is the blue one. A proponent of structural transformation and transition from the Islamic Republic. These people also, like the ones above, they want an Islamic Republic to end, but they want structural transformation. Instead of like toppling the government, they want enough structural change enough for it to eventually not be the Islamic Republic, okay? So this is kind of like um, reform, but a hard form of reform, like a, a reform, a hard form of reform and enough for it, for it to eventually not be the Islamic Republic, right? Then the, th the third option is also reform, but a different kind of reform. So it's proponent of gradual reform within the framework of the Islamic Republic. So this is also reform, but it's a softer kind of reform. It's a reform that it will maintain the Islamic Repu Republic, but things will be better, 
right? Things will be improved, okay? And then the four, fourth option is proponent of the principles of the Islamic revolution and the supreme lead, leader. These are people who think things are fine. They support the regime and they don't want any reforms, right? Um, and then the last option is none of them, right? So what you can see is the dramatic shift in attitude since Mahsa Amini's murder. Okay, so you can see September 2022, February 2020, uh, so se September 2021, sorry, so September 2021, 40% of Iranians were for toppling the regime, 40%. On February 2022, 41.5% were for toppling the regime, okay? And on December 2022, guys, this is only, this is all within one year. Within one year, we went from 41%, less than one year, less than one year, we went from 41% of Iranians want regime change to 60%. This is a job, jump of close to 20% in less than one year. Not 20 years, not 10 years, not five years, not even one year, less than one year, a, a, a jump of 20%. This is insane. This is insane. I don't know how the regime can handle this. Okay. Furthermore, both reform options, the hard reform and the soft reform, both of them dropped. But the more significant part is the people who are pro-regime, who, who want neither toppling or reform, they went from 18% back in February 2022 to 11%. So in less than one year, the support for the regime halved, halved. This, the regime has lost its base. The regime base support, which was 18%, it dropped to close to half of what it was in less than one year. This is why they're panicking. I don't know what, what leg is this regime has to stand on anymore. It's insane. This is why they're panicking. It's really difficult. And this is half, but, and you saw the numbers. The younger people, this is going to have again in one generation if, if the regime survives. Oh my or not. God. It's, 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 guys, if you're a dictator, you need at least like a fraction of your population to be on your side. It's going to be impossible close to impossible to hold on to a regime with this level of unpopularity okay so there's that this is a dramatic shift like we saw a dramatic shift in religious attitude and political attitudes and now we're seeing a dramatic shift so guys this is an insane i can't wait to see uh, shifts in religious attitudes in the past few years because oh my god yeah, well that... you know that they're looking into that as well because that's yeah. something that the gamon institute investigates um yeah. wow i mean there's just like so much to unpack here um yes and Miriam is pointing out that the first two the red and the blue are both saying no to the islamic republic in some yes. form or fashion it's just like how do we do that so really that yes. means 76 percent are saying no <laughs> to the islamic republic yes but yeah but the blue ones are decreasing because the blue ones are like, screw it. Like the, the, re the reduction in these people who, who want Islamic Republic to change through structural reforms. The reason why this is decreasing is because they're joining the red ones. They're like, screw reforms. Uh, the reason why people are saying screw reforms is because the regime um, is like has fake reforms. Like people have given mm -hmm. up on that. Like they know that there's no way this regime is going to actually given to structural reform so like this is the um the, it's only by force it's only by you know, you know pushing the government to you know to, to get the hell out like you know it's like some people just recently came out and said like uh, even people who were pro-regime just recently came out like maybe we need a referendum to for the regime for the islamic republic to change right and iranian a lot of iranian people is like we don't want a referendum because the referendum would be done in the framework of the Islamic Republic. We will have a refer we basically we don't want a referendum from the Islamic Republic. The, the answer is like we will we will have a referendum once we kick you out. 
Like they are not requesting a referendum from the Islamic Republic because they don't well, trust the Republic. It also validates Republic. and legitimizes their own authority. Yes, exactly. Which has They're been like, like soundly rejected. Yes, yeah, so um, Qasem, Qasem from Iran is basically echoing what many Iranians are saying. This is the shortest. Oh, I mean, and this this this, this wait, one wait, wait, chart here proves me, that reform is dead. Yes, so let me read what Qasem is saying. Qasem is saying reform is not possible, which basically a lot of what people's uh, what a lot of people's attitudes are. And now we have data to back this up because that's what we have been saying on this show for many many years now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, this is an important question that I think, or comment that I think um, I, and I bet our audience would like to see you respond to. So Sassan is saying, yes, but the Islamic Republic is not going anywhere for now. Theocracy is highly stable. And I don't think Sassan is endorsing theocracy as a means of government altogether. I just think he's talking about this particular government at this point in time. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, I don't. Um, are you saying theocracy? Theocracy is highly stable, as in all the theocracies are. No, 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 no. I think stable. he's just referring to this government and their current okay. status. Um, I mean, here's the thing. There's four. Th I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Okay, if they're going anywhere or not. Okay, and I think that you shouldn't be so certain, Sasa. Okay, um, this thing is very volatile, and they might stay in power but they also might topple. And I think you should talk with less certainty about this. Uh, when regimes topple, um, it was hard. It was very like when you look in history, a lot of it was highly unanticipated. Like things fall apart very quickly, very fast. Right. Um, and there are four elements that make me think that Sasa needs to be more skeptical about what he's saying. Right. Uh, one, we saw the dramatic drop in support and tyrants need their base support. Tyrants need their base support. Without that, it's almost going to be almost impossible to hold power, right? Um, two, two, Khamenei is going to die. He's very old and he's going to die at the time where the support for the regime is very, very low. So these two things and Khamenei is the glue that is keeping all of this together. Right. So his death is very destabilizing. Right. Three, green energy is going to replace fossil fuels. And the regime's only source of income for it to main con maintain control over its people is the money that it gets out of selling fossil fuels. Right. And lastly, satellite Internet is going to become a thing. And one of the main tools of control that the regime has over its people is the limitation of access to information. And when satellite internet becomes a thing, that tool is going to be taken away from them. So given these four things, I think thinking, you know, the whole this theocracy being stable, it becomes very, very questionable. Right? Yeah. Um, okay, Mariam, that's okay. So here's the thing. You guys don't understand what I'm saying, so pay attention. Mariam is saying, not yet, Armin. Fossil fuels will still be used for the next 50 years at least. Being used and being used at the same level are two very, very significant things, different things, okay? Being used, of course they're going to be used. Green energy is not going to completely replace fossil fuels. We don't need it for it for us not for we don't need for us to wait for it to be not completely used. The demand for it, if it drops, it will drastically reduce the prices. Okay, so even if it's used with competition, the prices will dramatically fall. Right. So within the fifty next fifty years, yes, fossil fuels will be used but the revenue from it will be dramatically different okay so yes it's not going to be a complete shift it just needs to be a major competition mm -hmm. um there yeah. was one last and comment. also yeah go on but i will find another Sasan thing is saying wanna... hello from the us and congratulations on reaching third <laughs> my dyslexia jumped out Thirty-seven thousand subs i didn't even i had to double check because i looked like earlier today and i didn't see this Right. Guys, wow. we just hit 37k. How exciting. Nice. Make sure to just nice. subscribe if you haven't already. What are you what are you doing if you're here and you're not subscribed? We do this every week. Come on. 
All right, so Sasan people also disagree with Sasan mostly. Okay, so the question was which of the following options best approximates your view about the protests of the past month? Um, months, but again, maybe this is not directly in opposition to what Sasan said, but it's somewhat related, right? So people who say I agree with the protests and think they will succeed. Okay, and the goal is toppling the government. So succeed so means like toppling the government, right? So 67% of Iranians inside of Iran agree that it will succeed. And 90% of Iranians out of Iran agree that this will, it will succeed. So again, this is not to say that they're right. Okay, I just wanted to show their opinions because I don't, I'm not doing an um, argument appeal to po uh, popularity fallacy. I just wanted to show their opinions. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.